Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day found in your worship bulletin. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told 
what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could do or see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he without, without sight and neither ate nor drank. The word of the Lord. Please join with me in saying responsibly Psalm 30, found in the Book of Prayer, page 621. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried out to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? or declare your faithfulness. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. second reading is a reading from the Revelation to John. I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord.
holy gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from land only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter, I'm sorry, Jesus said to him, Yes, I mean, it's Peter who said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to Peter, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to Peter the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, I'll just be candid with you. That is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. That's, I mean, it just doesn't get much better than that. I mean, it's got such great detail in it and kind of the things where you can imagine in the early days they were ribbing each other, uh, you know, elbowing each other in the ribs uh, when uh, they got to the, those, uh, those moments like typical 
Peter. You know, sometimes without filters, sometimes very impetuous. Uh, there's uh, the fellow on the shore, and uh, the beloved disciple says to him, you know who that is, that's the Lord. And so Jesus, what does he do? He's been working there with maybe just a loincloth on. He gets out of the boat. Well, first, before he gets out of the boat, he puts clothes on. He puts his toga on oh, and, uh, and then jumps into the water. I mean, a typical Peter. And then the detail about, about the fish. How many fish? 153. What does 153 mean? The, uh, the great uh, late preacher uh, to Harvard University, Peter Gomes would say about this, I don't know and I, just, I don't trust those who think they do know. Uh, and, uh, but maybe he might like to take in what uh, uh, Jerome, who was the translator of the Latin version of the Bible, known as the Vulgate, said that there were 153 known kind of fish at that day. And so what that, that 153 fish was a lot of fish. And what it represented was that every kind of everybody is included in the fish, in the, that catch, great catch that uh, Jesus' uh, ministry brought to the world. Um, and we don't have to spend any more time on that, but nonetheless, it's amazing. I think in this story about, um, and it's so, uh, stayed with people, that if you visit the Sea of Galilee today, if you visited the Sea of Galilee almost any time in the last 2,000 years, there you found a shrine or a church at the spot where the church remembers this story. It's a beautiful beach on the Sea of Galilee. Um, what, the first time I was there, pardon me, you, just bear with me while I tell you this. The first time I was there, there was a fog hanging over the sea and you couldn't see to the other side. It was so very mysterious and, and it was like, oh my gosh, yeah, it could have happened just like this. And Jesus being seen on the shore from out where the disciples were, oh, that would have been so amazing. And uh, the last time I was there, um, we could see all the way across the sea to the... Uh, hills of Jordan on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, you know, those hills from which the pigs ran down and jumped into the sea, that, those hills of, um, on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And so there, there it is, and, and there's, there have been a number of different churches on the, uh, built on uh, the rocks there over the years, but uh, there from the earliest days are some early Christian mosaics and they show fish on a grill. It's, it's just like, okay, yeah. The disciples met the risen Lord Jesus here, and we've remembered it, and we've been telling this story ever since. Of course, there are more reasons that we've been telling this story. It was like for the disciples, and hopefully for us, an echo of other times on the Sea of Galilee, perhaps you heard an echo of the feeding of the 5,000, uh, where Jesus broke bread and shared fish and, and a multitude was, was fed there. But this time, Jesus grilled the fish himself there on the beach, and it was just Jesus and the disciples. But nonetheless, it was in that breaking of the fish and sharing it there that they recognized Jesus. The collect for today uh, it is really linked directly to another gospel passage that we might read on this Sunday in a different year, actually. We read it last Sunday. That we, just as the disciples recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, so we might uh, recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread at the altar. Um, well... The disciples here shared a meal of fish with Jesus and recognized him in all his redeeming work. 
And our prayer is that we will do that very same thing. Now, as the story moves along, there's that interesting encounter that uh, Jesus and Peter have, uh, uh, where Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter's answers are uh, kind of poignant. And the third time when Jesus asks, you know, it's his feelings are hurt that Jesus is after this. Of course, the three times um, reflect the three times that Jesus had den been denied by Peter. Remember in the courtyard where Peter denied even knowing Jesus three times. So here at the sea, Peter affirms his love for Peter, I mean, his love for Jesus. Peter affirms his love for Jesus three times. And Jesus' response is, Tend my, uh, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. That's his, his instruction to Peter and to the rest of the disciples and to all of us. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. And you know, we didn't decide to reconvene our annual parish meeting on this day because of the gospel reading appointed for the day, but I don't think we could have done any better. Because here we are, ready to do some business about feeding our lambs, tending our sheep, feeding our sheep. That, this is a, an enterprise that we do together as the, those who gather under the name of Jesus Christ in this place. We're tending the lambs and the sheep of Jesus. That's who we are. And, um, and sometimes we may be a little like uh, Peter, impetuous, and we don't use our filters. Um, and other times we are spot on and we proclaim in as powerful and with all the gifts in our, at our disposal, the, the love of God in, and present in our lives. And I just have to say, I think yesterday was one of those days when we gathered with, I don't know, almost, well, a, not a, way more than 153, I'll tell you, maybe twice that many, um, uh, to bid farewell and op to Peter, to commend him to God's never-failing care and love, and to offer our support and consolation uh, to his beloved family, and to lament his death, and to begin to think about how it is that we remain together with him in the days to come in the fellowship of all the saints. We'll, we didn't celebrate communion yesterday, but we will today. And so I will tell you what I would have said yesterday had we celebrated communion. And that is that Peter's on the other end of a great banquet table. And when we break the bread and share the cup on our end, we can be sure that at the other hand, in the nearer presence of Jesus, that's where Peter is. And I think that's something for us to hold on to. I think to a broken-hearted world, that's something to hold on to and something for us to share. Um, that life at death is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a home and a place at the banquet table in God's kingdom. And so we're going to be also in the days to come taking counsel about how it is that we're going to continue and uh, reimagine ourselves as the body of Christ in this place. Um, there are things that we didn't do for the better part of, well, 
two years and three months uh, that are now possible or we think safe for us to do. Uh, we can share the cup or share the wine, we think safely at communion in one form, one by one means of administration or another. Um, uh, and so we're going to need help with that. Um, and I'll just say I think we're going to need someone else to be help administer. Oh, thank you, Marianne. I saw her hand first, so we're, we're set there. And, um, and so there's that. Uh, bless their hearts. Um, I think there are, we've had five active ushers uh, since we started coming back uh, together. And uh, Marty and Diana and Kay and uh, Carol and Marcia uh, really shouldn't be the only ones who are ushering. And so I hope maybe some of you will talk to Marty about helping out being an usher. Uh, we could do maybe with a few more readers. We could do with a few more chalice bearers. There's those things we could definitely do for some, with some help uh, with the altar guild tasks. Uh, and that's just the feeding and tending that we do in this room. And then there's the feeding that we do in the parish hall. And uh, I'm going to be passing around the, uh, I'm going to be passing around because uh, Susan Leonard is, is traveling today. If she were here, you know Susan would be traveling around. The sign, up, tra uh, passing around the sign up sheet for coffee hour. And so there'll be that. Uh, there are going to be things coming up. Uh, there's the, uh, uh, there's the parish picnic in June, um, and there's the, uh, on the day before that, that's the 12th, on the 11th of June, we're going to be welcoming uh, uh, other parishes to a celebration of confirmation in this place, and so we're going to need help to, to host that. Um, and then something else that you can expect to hear from Susan about just probably as soon as she gets back. Um, is that she's going to be calling together folks to uh, reimagine how we uh, involve the whole congregation in doing pastoral care together, what that's going to look like. It doesn't have to be the way we did it before. It doesn't have to just be the people who were doing it before. How are we going to do pastoral care in the days to come? And just in the spirit of what Jesus was saying about um, feeding the lambs, the youngest among us. Um, there's vacation Bible school coming up. I bet there are going to be opportunities to help with that. So there are lots of things as we move into whatever this next phase in our shared life looks like. There are opportunities for all of us. Oh, and the choir. Maybe it's time for you to be thinking about uh, sharing your gift of music with the choir and uh, expanding that fellowship again. That would, I think, be, you would find welcome if you, if you did that, besides they're fun people. Um, and you, you'd have a good time. So there is all sorts of opportunities for us to be thinking about. And why do we do them? We do them because Jesus loved us and asked us to love one another as he, loved, as he has loved us. And so here, especially at a community that gathers under the banner of Christ, we are called to incarnate the love of God revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me as we recall where our hearts are set. And again, that's page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer.
please join me in this morning's prayers of the people found in page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Remembering the intentional Episcopal communities in Connecticut, including the Episcopal Church at Yale, Seabury Retirement Community, and All Saints Chapel, West Cornwall, and the people of the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. And your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our presiding bishop Michael, our bishops Ian and Laura, our rector Harrison, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for your Holy Spirit to inspire decision making to promote the health and well being of all peoples as we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for those commended to the prayers of the parish, including all affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, those who are unhoused and lonely, for those suffering from addictions, victims of violence, for those serving in the military and their families, for the unemployed and the underemployed, and for those who are sick and suffering. Have compassion on them and on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Remembering Peter Marks and Megan Thompson, give to the departed eternal rest. Remembering all those in whose memory Easter flowers were given, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including all those commended to the prayers of the parish, including Jean, Jane, Kasha, Paul, Patty, Jeffrey, Sarah, Liz, Maxim, and Jerry. We also pray for Janice, Sandy, Mandy, and Chuck, Nancy, Shelley, Cindy, Kitty, Wick and Barb, Russ and Joan, Kevin, Brenny, Jean, Molly, and Babs. We also pray for Joanne, Bill and family, Charlie, Kelly, Jean, Rachel, Lorraine, Kathy, Carissa, Steve, Bob, Lee, Pat, Rosalie, and James. For all who face financial hardship because of the pandemic, and for those we name aloud or in silence, here and at home. Shall we stand for the peace? And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share that with one another.
Please be seated. I call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, the first one being that uh, of the annual parish meeting will reconvene following today's uh, service, this service, and we're going to call it to order here and declare the quorum, and then we're going to go and have coffee in the parish hall. So uh, that's the plan, and this is going to be brief. So we're not having lunch. There are cookies, but we're not having lunch today. So uh, you'll be on your way in, in, in good order. Um, there are some other, oh, and on your way, this this may be the thing that will get you to go to the meeting. Uh, and that is that on your way, uh, you can make your way through the guild room and pick up a, a potted Easter plant and uh, take it home and put it in your garden. So um, all those uh, amazing daffodils and the tulips and whatnot, you know, let's not be grabby. Uh, but <laughs> if there's something there that you would like to take home with you, feel free to do that. Yes. You were brave to brave the cold wind last Sunday on the green. Uh, lots of people helped with the celebration for creation care with the body and land. Outreach committee helped plan the event. Donna Lafada arranged for the excellent publicity. Uh, Donna Tofel helped with the invitations. Dorada, Cecilia, and Will with the confirmation class all helped with activities and setup. Harrison has supported Ecclesia Contemporary Ballet for the past five years. Bishop Ian Douglas has invited the company to join the mission of the diocese to take the church outside the walls and into the community. Do come to Hartford in June to see yourselves projected on the walls of the cathedral along with other churches in the diocese to celebrate the year-long work in creation care in Connecticut. Well, and before you leave, uh, Let's just recognize all of the hard work that Jennifer Hubner did in pulling this together. She was, she said, you're not going to have to do any heavy lifting. I, I signed ch checks and called people is what I did. And, uh, but Jennifer is the one who really made it happen. So thank you very much, Jennifer. And it was great. It, I mean, what a great, and the Committee on Weather, there was a little, I mean, we might take exception about how brisk it was, but it was really terrific. Um, so let's see, there, um, I'm sorry if my mind is a little foggy. Oh, yes, Marianne, you had something you wanted to say about what's happening at Camp Washington. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I, I think I spoke too quickly about serving wine as well. I don't have an alb here, so I think somebody else. Well, that's fine. You can, you can just do oh, okay. it as okay. is. Okay, thank you. Yes, you may, <clears throat> you may have seen something about this event at Camp Washington, May 14th. It's called Growing Hope, Forging Peace. And I wanted to just clarify that this is not for youth only. It's not for youth only. So I want to encourage you all Youth are invited for Friday night, May 13th, and adults are invited for May 14th. And I encourage you because I encourage you to attend because Shane Claiborne is going to be there. Some of us have heard him speak before. Shane Claiborne, yes, he's right, he's wonderful, right? Yeah. He's fabulous. He is. He's worth, yes. He is. He's worth a trip to Camp Washington. So well, Camp Washington is worth a trip to Camp Washington. Camp Washington is worth yeah. a trip to Camp that, Washington. And the food at Camp Washington yes. is worth a trip to Camp Washington. Yes, so I'm going to put up some signs. You can ask me about it. Bishop Curry will be there with his forge. Shane is going to be speaking. It's a day to, um, to talk about faith and gun violence prevention. 
and Shane, better than anybody I've ever heard, connects these two. Why, as Christians, do we need to be concerned about gun violence prevention? He has such a deep, deep sense in his body and being and faith and mind about this. And he is able to articulate this. He's going to have his book, Beating Guns, there for everyone. So I invite you to carpool, to attend. They're going to actually have an entire gun there that they break down, and he'll talk about that. They're going to be um, art exhibitions, at, at art events, that everything will be so well intertwined into gun violence prevention. And Shane is just going to weave all of this together with our faith, our spirituality, our beliefs, and our commitment to peace and why we need to be committed to this as people of faith. So I encourage you to attend if you are a grown-up, especially on Saturday. If you are a youth, you can go Friday night, have a great time, and be there Saturday as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is something else, yeah. absolutely, and so is Camp Washington. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Also, there's news here about how to find out about the latest with the uh, upcoming Episcopal election um, uh, details. And then uh, there's an, uh, this is the last Sunday of asking um, for participation in the ECW's Mother's Day uh, roses, and uh, so uh, you can find, uh, if you haven't already, uh, the way to register for that and participate in that, and details here in the bulletin. Um, tomorrow will be Cecilia's last in-person office hour uh, of the semester here, and then Wednesday, her last Zoom office hour. You might take advantage of getting on her, on her schedule for that. And Cecilia, why don't you tell us about the poetry uh, coming up, event coming up on Saturday. Hello, yes. So we've had two of these poetry, call them poetry retreats, a retreat for two hours, um, a poetry retreat. We've had them on the uh, on Epiphany during the season of Epiphany, on Lent during the season of Lent. So we were only going to have two, but we've all been enjoying them so much that we decided to have one more, and it only seemed fitting to round it out with um, a a date around the themes of Easter and Resurrection, both um, in a spiritual sense and in a personal sense. And so um, we'll have some poems that we will discuss. And uh, you don't have to know anything about poetry or, or write poetry to attend. Um, it's just a casual conversation. And it's, it's always a lot of fun. And I always learn a lot and find it very spiritually enriching. And there will also be refreshments. So, you know, that, that just makes it all better. And um, we've been having a really good time, those of us who have, uh, who have been involved in the last two. So I hope to see some of you there. It will be um, next Saturday, which is the 7th. Yes. Yes, I said the wrong date last week. Uh, it's next Saturday, May 7th, from 1.30 to 3.30 in the Guild Hall. So hope to see you all there, the parish hall. Thank you. Thank you. Can I wait Yeah, well, please. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Will. Uh, Cecilia and I are both in a musical improv troupe, which also practices spiritual reflection as a part of our rehearsals and performances. This is a, a group I started with a grant from the Epis Episcopal Evangelism Society, and we have a performance today oh. at 4 p.m. at Trinity on the Green Episcopal Church in New Haven. And so um, we perform improvised musical theater, and then afterwards we have a talkback discussion 
with the audience about the intersection of spirituality and improvisation and music and creativity. And um, we would love to see you there if you're available. At four o'clock today, Trinity on the Green in New Haven. Yes. Okay. Wow. You two are just full of surprises. <laughs> that is terrific. Um, so um, I just thought, I, because uh, I can see some of you, this will be the first time that you, you've been here since we returned to uh, receiving uh, uh, the wine, consecrated wine. So let me just quickly say that uh, we're still distributing communion from the nave floor. Um, there'll be a, a chalice here for sipping. That's what it's for, is for sipping. And then over here, if you would prefer, um, is a, th th we have these little communion cups. So I would encourage you to take one, you, the worshiper, to pick one up and hold it. And then Marianne will pour just a little bit into it. Then you can uh, consume it and place it on the tray on the children's altar. So um, that's uh, another way uh, to receive if that's your, if that's your preference. So um, let's see. Um, I happen to re remember, well, one birthday that I, there's a birthday I'm not supposed to remember, and then there's a birthday I can remember. Well, she has not told me I can't, so I'm going to. Um, and that is Janice Novak. So Janice is uh, home and making a remarkable recovery. And uh, so uh, we definitely want to pray for her. Is there anybody else who's celebrating a birthday? Ed Seibert. I knew there was somebody else. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Watch over your servants, Ed and Janice, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> well, dear hearts, we've been richly blessed in the life of the kingdom. Let us with gladness present the alms and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Purex. You'll find the card in the Purex for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all the creatures of the earth and gave birth to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we sing with joy. yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and to give himself for us a sacred offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood in the new covenant. This is my, I'm sorry. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with Peter and Paul and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, O God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught his friends, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ was raised for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our post-communion prayer is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, grant you grace in every good work to do his will, perfecting in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The 78th meeting of annual parish meeting of Christ Episcopal Church to order. Uh, Mr. Junior Warden, do we have a quorum? We do have a quorum. Thank you very much. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia. See you all in the parish hall. <laughs>